there's life on Mars. At least, that's what NASA hoped to confirm with the car-sized Mars rover set to explore the Jezero crater on the Red Planet. Perseverance, or Percy as some guys at the Space Exploration HQ like to call it, has been navigating through Mars for almost a year and a half, caching samples from the planet and sending back images to the hub, all in an attempt to confirm the long-standing question, is there life on Mars? And you know what? There might be. Join us today as we look through what Percy's gathered, why life on Mars is possible, and whether we'd have to move to the Red Planet anytime soon. Octavia E. Butler Landing People say the darndest things, but you'd expect something coming from a scientist to be fact-based and well-researched, right? So when they told us that Martians might exist, everyone was convinced. But why do they think there are humans, aliens, or some things inhabiting Mars? Water, the very basis of life on Earth, was discovered on Mars. This led astrobiologists to believe that if water was what streamlined Earth's revolutionary history, it could do the same for our Milky Way comrade. NASA's 2020 Mars mission might have had several goals, collecting geosamples, exploring surface topography, and more. However, the rover mission's primary purpose was to discover if life either still exists on Mars or that it ever did. The best place to look was where scientists believed there used to be water. Naturally, the area surrounding a lake or any large body of water would have the most habitants living in close proximity. The Jezero Crater, Scandinavian for water, was chosen as Perseverance's 2021 landing site because the massive clay crater was believed to have once been a lake. Percy successfully landed in the crater in February 2021. The landing site was named the Octavia E. Butler Landing Site after the late African-American science fiction author. Scientists at NASA believe that the Jezero Crater probably hosted Mars's longest river. Plus, they think that the lake existed for billions of years. According to their estimates, the Red Planet itself existed for a total of 4.6 billion years, much like Earth. This means that it's highly likely that there either was life on Mars or the more exciting possibility that there still is. Sherlock Scanning habitable environments with Raman and luminescence for organics and chemicals. Yeah, we'll stick to calling it Sherlock. The spectrometer is a fine-scale ultraviolet device explicitly designed for perseverance to detect organic matter in the samples that it's been caching from the Red Planet. Why is organic material important to NASA? Because the carbon-based material could only come from the feces or the decaying bodies of organisms, such as plants and animals. On September 15th, mission managers updated that Percy had found organic matter while scouting through eight miles of the Jezero crater. The rover had been collecting samples from multiple ridges around the crater and discovered that two samples collected from Skinner's Ridge and Wildcat Ridge had the highest amount of organic matter ever found by a rover. Sunanda Sharma, an instrument scientist for Perseverance, later claimed that if the mission was to search for life on Mars, then the existence of such high levels of organic matter was a clue. Percy has a total of 43 sample tubes, out of which only 25 are due to be cached. The organic matter is stored in the car-sized rover and will be handed over to a sample retriever lander and sent back to Earth for scientists to examine further. This would be a collaborative effort between NASA and the European Space Agency. ALH-84001 The fact that the Perseverance rover managed to find organic matter on Mars was big news, but not as big as the very first time scientists came to the theory that there could be life on the Red Planet. The year is 1996 and David McKay and his team announced that they have proof that Martian life exists. The proof that they're referring to is a rock nested on a pillow and guarded better than gold. It's a rock named ALH-84001 and McKay and his comrades believe that the space rock is a fragment that blew off of Mars, traveled through space and landed in Antarctica where snowboarding geologists picked it up. McKay went on to display the space rock and to open the panel for discussion, is there life on Mars? Not surprisingly, the entire community was divided. And it wasn't just the average Joe who was skeptical, but McKay's fellow scientists as well. For example, William Schopf felt like the world was glamorizing nothing more than just an ordinary rock and insisted that the presence of organic matter, while a discovery nonetheless, was not tangible proof that life existed on Mars. 
Today, the scientific community is split 75 to 25. The majority believes that life did exist on Mars some billions of years ago, probably 3.6 billion years ago, because that's when the Jezero crater dried up. The minority believes that life still exists on the planet, and there may be a small percentage, and we're talking single digits here, that believes there never was life on the red planet. But that's what Perse is set out to locate. Armed with cameras, microphones, and samplers, the rover is supposed to collect over 43 cached samples of matter from the planet, record frequency waves, test for the presence of oxygen, and more. Back in February of 2021, when Percy landed on Mars, it was accompanied by a smaller drone named Ingenuity. Ingenuity was tasked with collecting airborne samples and data of the planet. To date, the drone has made 29 trips across the planet and has set a somewhat limited record of having the longest flight on Mars. So what if Percy discovers life on Mars? So far, we've talked about what the car-sized rover is set to do, the tools it has to do it, and the hyped-up space rocks. But we need to admit the obvious here. If you were to tell just about anyone that the Mars rover found data to suggest that there could be life on Mars, they'd expect it to be a bit more exciting than organic matter found in rocks by the side of a dried-up crater. But let's say it's tomorrow already, and the headlines read, The Perseverance rover has found an actual Martian. To make this a bit less sci-fi, taking over the Earth and more rooted in reality, we'll say that the proof came in the form of a fossil, a fossil of a Martian nonetheless. So what then? After the initial shock of it all wears off, space agencies would have to make some difficult decisions and talk about unexplored topics. Their first thought would be, what does this mean for Earth? The presence of life on Mars, the very goal of the Mars 2020 mission, means that there are or were other life forms in the universe. Maybe Earth has counterparts living on different planets with different ways of life and means to sustain themselves. But life on Mars, current or past, would beg the question, where did it start first? That's something that has already been heavily discussed. Scientists believe that all life started in the same way, through a unicellular organism that turned into a multicellular one and triggered the evolutionary pathway. Life on Mars would have begun in the same way, but that life existed long before it existed here. This could either mean that the history of mankind actually dates back to another meteorite landing from Mars onto Earth with organic matter that transformed unicellular organisms into multicellular ones, enabling life to start here. Or it may be the other way around. But based on what Percy has seen, craters, deserts, and the general geopattern of a deserted planet, life probably started on Mars. But could we live on Mars? The multi-billionaire entrepreneur Elon Musk is always up to something that many would think is nothing more than just some bored rich guy trying to find a hobby. His endless ramblings on Twitter have people divided over whether to take him seriously or not. Still, Musk didn't get to where he is without being a revolutionary, an eccentric revolutionary at that. So Percy's discovered that there could be life on Mars, which suggests that the Red Planet is capable of sustaining life. People talked about this in 1996, which gave the multi-billionaire enough incentive to launch his space manufacturing company SpaceX. One of the 2002 company's primary objectives is to colonize Mars eventually. People have been signing up to be amongst the first to be able to live on the planet and possibly to capitalize from it in some way. However, scientists would advise against shifting permanently to the red planet. Why is that? Because while the existence of life on Mars would undeniably be revolutionary, it still wouldn't serve as enough reason for people from Earth to up and leave. This might be because of what Mars represents, that is, the decay of a planet after it runs out of water and fails to be able to support life on a massive scale as it does on Earth. Furthermore, the planet's topography and atmosphere are such that they cannot support humans who need oxygen and water to survive. Furthermore, the cosmic radiation on Mars is so unreasonably high that if humans were ever to step foot on the planet, they wouldn't be able to survive. This kind of undermines the whole plot of the 2015 film, The Martian. But what would a Martian look like? Everyone has their own contorted descriptions of what a Martian would look like, but the overwhelming majority seems to believe that they're wrinkled, prune-like, and bug-eyed. 
This isn't based on reality as much as the fact that it makes for great Hollywood shock factors. But what if Martians did exist? What would they look like? To start, they'd probably be a lot taller than most humans. Since we don't know the genetic factors that would have played a role, we'll base this assumption on environmental factors. Height depends on nutrition and physical activity. Martians would have been tall because they'd probably have been scouting through their planet looking for food and trying to compete against one another for what we can assume would have been a minimal supply of food. But would they have been wrinkly and prune-like? That's also debatable. Mars is approximately 222 million kilometers away from the Sun, whereas Earth is only 148 million kilometers away. Mars, while being primarily represented as a Sahara, is actually colder than Earth. If Martians had no body hair on them, they'd probably shiver up and die. But also the fact that the climate wouldn't have been able to allow for their creation in the first place. And the bug-eyed thing is still up for debate as well. The overwhelming radiation may have forced them to lose sight or develop a more protective orbit. But we'll only find out if an actual Martian ever intercepts Perse's path. Perseverance NASA's car-sized Mars rover Perseverance joins the long list of rovers set to discover the existence of life on Mars as part of NASA's Mars 2020 mission. The rover has proved itself worthy of the effort so far by being able to collect organic matter on the surface of the Jezero crater. Is this enough to suggest that life does, in fact, exist on Mars? Not really, but, as Sharma stated, it's a nudge in the right direction. Percy has completed 598 sols or 653 Earth days on Mars. The rover will return to Earth in 2033 after having sufficiently surveyed the surface of Mars and answered the long-standing question, is there life on Mars?